please be seated. On behalf of the Forty and Loisel families, it is my great pleasure to welcome you today to witness the union of two wonderful young people. Donnie and Megan love the Lord and each other, and they would like to thank you for your support and your presence here today. All of you mean a great deal to them, and they are delighted that you are able to share with them this joyful occasion when they become husband and wife. We have gathered today in the presence of God. The scriptures describe the marriage of a man to a woman as one of God's greatest gifts to us. Marriage was instituted by God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and is to be held in high honor among all people. Let us then enter into this celebration today, recognizing that God is pleased to bless those who love and follow him. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we do thank you for your presence with us today, and we are grateful for Donnie and Megan. Thank you for working in their lives and for bringing them to this day. You are so wise and kind. You have provided abundantly for Megan and Donnie and for us all. We acknowledge your provision and confess that we need you. You are our life. Lord, we thank you that Donnie and Megan know you. For their relationship with you, we are most grateful, and it is our prayer that you will be at the center of their life together. May they enter into marriage as Christ instructed us with humility, esteem for each other, respect, and love. May they encourage one another throughout their lives and live together as joint heirs of the grace of God. May they never tire of seeking your wisdom and guidance. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I did. Let's now hear from the Word of God. Is there a Bible in one of the... <laughs> Tim has one. Thank you, Tim. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, 
always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Thank you, Katrina. Before Donnie and Megan exchange their vows, I would like to take just a few moments to remind them of the significance and importance of the step they are taking today. In our conversations discussing today's ceremony and celebration, Donnie and Megan asked me to describe why we are in this place today. Why are we gathering in Champaign-Urbana? After all, much of the family and many friends have traveled great distances to be here. And let me say to all of you, uh, we are most grateful for your efforts. But some may not be aware that Donnie and Megan met at the University of Illinois while they were in graduate school. Both were active in InterVarsity Christian Fellowship on campus, and soon after they met, it became clear that they shared the same convictions concerning the Lord, his word, and family. Although it was the University of Illinois where they met, Donnie and Megan asked me to mention that their church families played a large role in shaping their view of marriage and the home. Megan told me, and I quote, it was awesome to be a part of the family here at Stratford Park Bible Chapel. Let me say we'd love to hear comments like that. And she and Donnie wish to be married here today because they saw a model of home and family that they want to be reflected by their lives together. It was here in Champaign-Urbana that the two of you realized the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ. As you begin your married life together, it will be equally important for each of you to make your commitment to Christ of the highest priority. Only as you draw closer to him, committing to know and love him more, will you truly draw closer to each other. The reason this is true is because God is the one who made us, and he is the one who instituted marriage. It was his idea. In the very beginning of the Bible, God introduces marriage by stating this, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Commenting on these words, Jesus said, so they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no, no man separate. So today, Donnie and Megan, you are making a binding commitment to one another in the presence of God. You are pledging to enter into a union, to become one flesh, as the Bible puts it, to form the nucleus of a new family, by living together in love and remaining faithful to each other for as long as you both shall live. Why is this so important to God? Why does he intend marriage to last a lifetime? And why, as stated in several places in the Bible, does he hate divorce? The reason is twofold. The first is that marriage is a powerful tool in God's hands to show a man and woman over a lifetime, what love truly means. You love each other now, but if you will remain faithful to him and his word, his promise to you is that you will love each other much more in 20 years than you do today. I can attest to the truth of this promise. Secondly, marriage is of great importance to God because it is a symbol of how Christ loves the church. The theme of the Bible is this, that God has loved humanity so much that he sent his own son to die upon a cross to cover or pay for the sins that each of us commits. This enormous gift that God has given us is summarized in the book of John, where he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. 
This love of God is so great, it defies description. God's plan is that each marriage will reflect this love of Christ for his church. To you, Donnie, the scriptures say, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Likewise, wives are called on to be Christ-like in an attitude of humility and submission. Mutual love, respect, and submission are all vital elements of God's plan for the marriage relationship. Not because I say so or because it seems like a good idea. Rather, this is what he desires, and this is how you reflect God's character. Because he has proven himself to be faithful to us and is faithful every day, he calls upon us to be faithful to our husband or wife. It is Christ living in you that makes this possible. We do not have the ability on our own to follow Christ's example, but he gives us the power to fulfill the vows you make this day. One of God's promises to you is that if you commit to obeying him, And following Christ's example, he will give you the strength to do just that. But there is more to this story because making this commitment to each other has certain benefits, gifts that God has built into marriage. Remember that the biblical picture of marriage is that God knows what is best for us, and he urges us to follow Christ's example displaying the same selflessness to our husband or wife, that same level of humility and commitment that Christ showed to the church. On top of that, God gives you the power to live out your vows. Now imagine being in this kind of relationship. This is what biblical marriage is about, and it is fantastic. First of all, it provides security. From this day forward, you have someone who is committed to you without reservation or without qualification. There is someone committed to your happiness who will always be there for you. Someone striving for your best. Someone who truly loves you. This is not a temporary arrangement. You are not going to see if it works to try it for a while. You will love each other and work it out, and you will rest in God's provision for you. What a tremendous relief that this brings. It affords security that many long for today. You do not have to question each other's love for you because you do not have to earn it, and you cannot lose it. This is the way that God loves himself, and marriage is one of his greatest gifts to us. The security that I've been talking about provides the foundation for something equally wonderful, and that is the gift of intimacy. In a secure relationship, you are free to be yourselves. Each of us has a need for companionship and a sense of belonging, to love and be loved, And marriage has been designed by God to perfectly meet these needs. Biblical marriage also provides a healthy and safe environment in which your sexuality can find full expression and fulfillment. God has designed us uniquely as male and female, and we can enjoy and celebrate this complementary difference within the confines of marriage. Intimacy flourishes in a secure environment, and that too is God's gift to you both. God is so good. Biblical marriage provides you a soulmate and a lifelong relationship with that special someone who complements you, someone who is different from you, and yet is someone you need. Someone who will take off the rough edges, someone who will listen someone who will encourage, someone with whom you can share the joys and trials of life. But God has built into marriage his greatest gift in such a way 
that it becomes evident only with the passing of time. This gift is a bonding, a depth of relationship that can only develop over time. When security and intimacy are allowed to thrive and healthy patterns are established, there develops a richness and a depth in your marriage that cannot be produced in any other way. All of us see this from time to time, don't we? In older couples who still hold hands and still sparkle when in each other's presence. Couples who have shared a life together and are now truly inseparable, truly one. Such a relationship is not a dream, nor is it a fairy tale. It is a result of trusting God and his plan for marriage. It was designed by God for our good. It is wonderful and it is holy because God has designed it so. And so, Donnie and Megan, you are about to commit your lives to one another. You are about to embark on a journey, and what a wonderful journey it will be. Be faithful to God. Trust his judgment. Put Christ first, and you will never regret having done so. He will bless your marriage in a way that is unimaginable now. So let us again hear from God's word. Hebrews 12, uh, 1 to 3. Therefore, Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thank you, Tim. Considering then the solemn, sacred, and lifelong nature of marriage and the sincere vows that you are about to make, will you, Donnie, can I ask you to turn together, face each other? Thank you. Will you, Donnie, take this woman to be your wife, and will you pledge to her in all love and honor to live with her and cherish her according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage for as long as you both shall live? I will. Megan, will you take this man to be your husband, and will you pledge to him in all love and honor to live with him and cherish him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage for as long as you both shall live? I will. Donnie, do you have a ring uh, as a token of the vows you have just made to Megan? I do. Mm. Repeat after me. Megan. Megan. I give this ring to you. I give this ring to you in token and in pledge in token and in pledge of our constant faith of and our, abiding love of our constant faith and abiding love mm. Megan do you have a ring as a token of the vows you have just made to Donnie Yes I do Repeat after me Donnie, I give this ring to you. Donnie, I give this ring to you. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. At this time, Donnie and Megan will light the unity candle.
God's one hand make of our hearts one heart make of our vows one last vow only death can part us Let us pray. Our Father, we commit Donnie and Megan to you now as husband and wife. We pray for your blessings on them. We ask you to watch over their home and guide and direct their paths. Fill their hearts with joy and give them patience and love. May their home be known for its warmth and grace and may they always walk with you. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Donnie, Megan, by the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife according to the ordinance of God and the laws of the state of Illinois. And I do so in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Donna, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Donnie and Megan, as you begin your married life together, May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and in the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, it is now my great honor and pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Donald Forty.
coming uh, today. Uh, I know that uh, the bride and the groom are grateful for your presence here today, and I have just a couple of quick announcements, if I might make them. Donnie and Megan will return in just a few moments to greet you and excuse you by row. So if you'd be so kind as to say, <laughs> for family, we make an exception. <laughs> After exiting this, the sanctuary, you will find a family receiving line, and so we hope that you will enjoy uh, greeting the family at that time. So at least you remember that the wedding uh, and the reception uh, will be held starting at 5 p.m. Again, thank you so much for coming. So let's start with um, the official document. Uh, I 
I've already just just to let yeah. you know, I've already filled out this oh, side. Wonderful. Okay, so this is the legal document. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll start here. Mm -hmm. Signature. And it has it as Megan. You can do it as Megan Renee or Megan R. Would be fine. Beautifully done. Thank okay. you so much. And sir, you're right here where it says groom signature. If you would please. Now, you do have the option to have the, the, the marriage witnessed. Uh, oh. If okay. you wish. It's optional. It's not necessary. Okay. That, um. uh, that's up to you. If you want to do that, you can do it. I forgot to mention it to you earlier. What do you think? I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, I guess well, since we don't have the arm, we need the one of us. Yeah. I could have them we'll sign it later. Oh, if, if you if you, if you find want, a I could keep it. I could just that keep would it. be nice. Okay. You want me to ask um, sure. Chelsea and Chelsa? Chelsea and do you want Lisa? me to grab them or, or or Eric? Eric, Eric maybe and Eric and Eric and Max. thank you. All right. So uh, and I can have them witness that here as well okay. if you want. Thank okay. you. Okay. So I've signed this and oh, we don't here. sign this one. Okay. No, no, this All is right. just for your keepsake. Okay. So Sounds so good. let me say congratulations, Donnie. I'm just so proud of you. The Lord bless you. Yes. Thank you. And bless you too, dear lady. I love you very we love much. You very much too. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you don't mind, but uh, when I get when I give thanks for the food at the, uh, the dinner and the reception, I'm going to tell them that I think of you as my daughter. Oh, oh that's really yes. And, and you're in danger of being oh, daughter yes. too. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, yes. Oh, I appreciate it. And I was trying to soak in the words, but I was actually thinking while I was up there that you should uh, make a copy of those words. There was a lot of good teaching in there that there I was. think that yeah. we want to remember. Yeah, I borrowed some of it from others that I respect. Right? Yes, wow. Some of it is my own. Yeah. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank well, the you. Lord bless you both. Thank you. And uh, the witnesses to marriage is it's optional. If you could sign on that first line right there, okay. please. Much and Eric, mm -hmm. okay, you're at uh, the second line, please. Thank you, sir. And don't go away. I have one more for both of you. This is this is uh, a keepsake for the couple. And uh, so, Chelsea, if you'd be willing to sign sure. there, right there, if you please. Uh, you sign much like your sister. <laughs> it's, it's that family. Uh, <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Okay. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.